Hello, friends. Welcome to the Nope Coach Podcast, episode 358, Workbook versus the Wild. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Now, for this episode title, I have to give credit where credit's due. I got a lovely email from Liddy. I'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation of your surname. I apologize. Naker? It's N-A-I-C-K-E-R. And for anyone listening, Liddy is a ethical copywriter for small businesses. So if you want me to hook you up, send me an email, let me know. Anyway, we're chatting um, in response to one of my emails about the difference between when you do the workbook versus in the wild, real life application. And this, I've been sitting on this topic for a week because I literally just got back like an hour ago from Coffs Harbour. So at the time of recording this, it's school holidays. I took my children and my husband. We all went to Coffs Harbour. I had never actually been there before. It's in New South Wales, the home of the big banana. And I might do a whole episode just about that. It was a fabulous trip, an amazing time. And yeah, so I pre-recorded the last week's worth episodes. I'm feeling rusty. I'm feeling rusty. You guys wouldn't have noticed a difference because it's still been coming out daily because I was very organized and proud of myself for pre-recording before I left. But anyway, big banana, Coffs Harbour, topic for another day. For today, workbook versus the wild. Whenever we do a online course, a program, a training, sometimes even um, so many books now, you can buy an attached workbook, whether it be a download or anything. I mainly work in the niche of, or niche, depending on where you are and how you pronounce it, of boundaries, saying no, you know, healthy boundaries, saying no to others so you can say yes to yourselves. And there is no shortage of workbooks and worksheets and things, checklists, things that you can work through. I don't make a lot of them for my clients and I know it irritates people I work with so much, but there is such a difference between working through a workbook and I just had to pause that for a moment because <laughs> my family are unpacking in the background. I don't know how if that's coming through the mic, but anyway, I was like, I need to record this podcast. It's due out tomorrow. Now I've lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. There's a difference between working through something in a workbook or a tick box or a you know worksheet and the actual real life application. Because I, I don't know about you, but I was a straight A student at school. I teacher's pet, like I like getting good grades and the ticks in the box and all that sort of thing. That did not prepare me for real life application of pretty much anything. Like it's oddly disappointing to be like, I'm really, really good at this that I can tell you this, you know, upside down, inside out, back to front. But then, you know, the, the biggest example that's coming to mind for me is when I was at medical school, knowing the exact placement of where all the arteries and veins and muscles and bones are according to the textbook versus when you have a real life person in front of you. And the very first thing that almost every patient will say to you is how many times have you done this before? And I have never in my life been one to fake it till I make it. I am honest. I'm direct. Uh, I don't, you know, ever pretend to do something that I haven't done before. It hasn't always been in the best of stead. But anyway, all that to say, there is such a world of difference between being good at something on the workbook or where someone's grading you and then the real life application, or as Liddy says, in the wild, when you actually have to say no to that person, set that boundary, you know, in my medical school days, make that incision. I can still remember the first time that I stitched somebody up and I, my parents-in-law, for some reason I was having, well, they weren't my parents-in-law at the time. It was my boyfriend's parents who were having dinner together. And my, my boyfriend's mum, now mother-in-law, was like, they let you practice on, on real people. And I was like, well, you don't think you graduate a doctor and just suddenly know how to do things, don't you? I was trying, I wasn't trying to be sarcastic, but seriously, how do you get practice on things if not with real people? The same, whether it be, you know, making incisions medical school style or setting a boundary and actually saying to somebody, not today, no thank you, not this time, I'd rather not, I'm not interested, and so on and so forth. The same is, you know, for those of you in business or, you know, wanting to be in business, actually asking somebody to pay you 
to say, okay, you know, here's the contract or here's when payment's required or that kind of thing. Say you are starting a podcast, hitting publish, or you're, you've written a book. Like I wrote a book. That's only such a small part of the process. And you need to market the book, which is a whole other set of skills. So all of this to say, if you were like me and a very good student, you know, straight A or perhaps close to straight A, very you know, book smart, but then have struggled with real world application. I guess one of the signs for that might be where you just keep studying. Like I will own that I'm a lifelong learner and I do like getting, you know, certificates and ticks in the box. Yes. But those things don't actually grow my business, having conversations with potential clients. Um, I dare say sales conversations, because I just think that sounds skeezy, but actually saying to people, this is what I have to offer. You know, are you interested? This is how much it is. This is how it would look like, you know, the exchange of money for services that is different then how pretty does your website look or, you know, how good is your copy or um, what are your photos like? You know, it's a whole different thing, workbook versus the wild in so many areas of our life. I'm even thinking like dating. I am fortunate in the way that I didn't date for very long. I married my first boyfriend, but I live vicariously through a lot of my friends and they're like, you know, the the app or the profile that you put up versus the person that you meet are often very, 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 very different. And you can even see that in business. Sometimes the person's website is so polished and their photos are so professional and their hair and their makeup's done. And then you meet them and you're like, is this the same person? How old are these photos? And the image that we portray versus, you know, who we are. And I love it when I speak to people and we get on Zoom or, you know, we meet up and they're like, oh, you're just like you are in your show or you're just like you are on your website because, yeah, I don't see the point in the wild being different to the the part that I'm portrayed. You know, perhaps I am different like that and, yeah, I know I can be a bit bumbling and a bit awkward and I don't edit, but I don't edit in real life. Can you imagine if it would be like having a conversation with me on Zoom and I'm like, pause, redo, I didn't get that exactly right or hang on. I need to get my optimal angles. What's that from? Optimal angles. Oh, crazy rich Asians. If you haven't watched that movie, highly recommend. So I've ended up on a very circuitous journey with this episode, but what I really want to bring home or have you thinking about or pondering today, how often are you not putting yourself out into the wild, not risking the real world feedback, not risking the failure or looking dumb or looking stupid or, you know, public humiliation or something. And instead uh, racking up the workbooks left, right, and center, going from course to course, coach to coach, program to program, procrastinate branding, procrastinate this, writing poem after poem or piece after piece or blog after blog and never hitting publish. You know, there is a whole different skill set in putting it out there in the real world and risking rejection or humiliation or trolls. And people are going to have all sorts of thoughts, feelings, and opinions about what you put out there. My daughter is what I thought was like the world's biggest Swifty. And Taylor Swift released a new album a couple of days ago. Apparently it's a double album. I'm not a Swifty, obviously, because I don't know all the deets. But um, my daughter was like, I don't like her new album. And I was like, that's okay. You don't have to love every single thing that somebody puts out there. Some things will resonate and you'll be like, yes, this is for me. And other things you'll be like, yeah, oh, well, I like other stuff better. And I think, you know, somehow along the line, many of us have lost touch with that because it's like, oh, we can have a difference of opinion or different likes or different things. We don't have to love every single thing about an individual to love that individual wholly. And how this has got to do with our workbook versus the wild when we do something in a class or in a simulation or on a worksheet, that is a whole different ball game than when you're face to face with someone, whether that be in person, on Zoom, on the phone, however it is, and the conversation isn't going the way that you thought. When I was a medical student and I learned the exact location of arteries and veins and nerves and this, and then given my first patient to palpate something, I'm withdrawing blood. Like I I could do that on the mannequin. I could stitch on the practice things. I was like unbeatable. Then my first actual living human that you have to have a conversation with that speaks back, unlike the textbook, who 
you have a rough idea of where things is, but every single person, every scenario is different. There's no amount of practice that can prepare you. I'm not saying don't practice. Like, oh, I hope you're not taking that message away. Don't bother throw all the workbooks out. It's not that at all. But it is a different experience doing something in a simulated environment, in a checkbox environment where somebody else is marking it for you. Even if, you know, going back to the business example, you have a business coach or you have a copywriter like the fabulous Liddy is, who's like, yeah, this is great. But then you give it to actual potential clients who are going, who are reading that to wanting to work with you. Their experience of what you create is going to be very, very different. Perhaps I should have called this episode build it and they may not come because I think sometimes we've got this field of dreams type scenario. It's like, I just need to put put the website out, press publish, and then suddenly I'm going to be um, an overnight success. Or I just have to practice this sentence in my head of how to set the boundary and how to say no. And then my family and my loved ones are just going to get it. They're going to respond like I was told they would in the worksheet. The you know, And then when they go off script, that's another thing too about, you know, coaching and certifications. I've got a lot of certifications. I'm not anti-certification, but depending on the certification that you do, if you're given scripts to follow and boxes to check, and then the first time you get on a call with someone, people don't follow the script. They don't know what the script is. It's like, I remember when um, we had my daughter, Xanthi, she's now almost 11 and I'd read every single baby book there was. I was going to be like the best mum there is. And I remember being exhausted and Xanthi was crying and I was crying and my husband's like, what's up? And I was like, this isn't working. None of the stuff that I read in the books is happening. And I remember maybe he was just as exhausted as me, but Jeremy was laughing and going, well, I don't think Xanthi's read the book, Suze. So, you know, the, the workbooks, the parenting books that are made to help you navigate the journey to parenthood haven't been read by your child and yes there are predictions and yes there are you know milestones and all sorts of things and these things can help I'm not saying throw it all out but I'm just saying if your real life experience doesn't match up to your experience with the workbook or the check sheet or the expected norm there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with your business or your child or your family that you're setting a boundary with or the person that you're dating there's just a very different experience of the workbook versus the wild and you don't need to do another course hire another coach do another training just pick yourself up dust yourself off keep in the race not that there's a race because we're not competing but you know keep going and realize you know this is what the wild is all about you have totally got this. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you aren't yet on my email list, I highly encourage you head over to my website, suzannekolberg.com, click on newsletter. I have recently changed to a new um, email platform and I don't think anyone signed up yet. And I've kind of tested it behind the scenes. So I was like, if you are hearing this and you sign up to my emails, hit reply, let me know that you have joined me since this update. And that will make my nervous system feel a lot better that the tech is working. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to catch you on the next one. Bye for now.